that is the solution that's going to get us to the prize of robo taxis. So let's talk Tesla stock, and we're going to watch three different videos from different analysts out there. And Kathy Wood is the main one that we'll uh, we'll cover. So first, it's it's fun to see that Tesla stock is now back considered as magnificent seven because of the nine straight gains. Uh, do you know much about this? And you know, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, obviously having been down on the stock until just the past few days sentiment has been pretty negative on tesla this year from a lot of people including a lot of people who are bulls and who have you know significant positions and so it's just great to see the momentum kind of turning back in favor of tesla you know if you want to be a long-term holder you've got to be able to stomach the ups and the downs of being invested especially in a story stock like tesla that has been, you know, historically very volatile, which means volatile when things are going well, like we've seen the past few weeks, um, but then also volatile when things are not going well. And it's great to see the recognition of Tesla as, you know, one of the premier tech companies in the world. And that's really the Magnificent Seven to me. That's what the significance of that is. And I am excited to just see the continued execution of Tesla on full self-driving um man the early indications that we've got for 12.3.4 are very strong and they you know while it is taking a little bit of extra time i think that the post by um a shock earlier this year i ran across it yesterday and it it feels so timely that this is the beginning of the end still mm -hmm. that we've we've got some challenges still to work out with how do we do full-scale mass deployment development of these full end-to-end -end neural networks. And I think that's the hiccups that we're seeing right now um, with trying to get 12.4 into the hands of as many customers as possible. But those are engineering challenges that we're figuring out. And the underlying architecture of having these full neural nets, that is the solution that's going to get us to the prize of robo-taxis. And it's just exciting to see them continuing to iterate understanding the nuances of how to make it work and what the challenges really are and what the timelines are going to be. Um, but I think that given the success of so many other areas of AI over the last couple of years, the market is really starting to realize the significance of what Tesla is doing with these full end-to-end -end neural networks that allow them to do in full self driving what LLMs have done in other areas. And, um, you know, I think that's why we're starting to see the sentiment shift, you know, combined obviously with the, the removal of the overhang of Elon's compensation package uh, as well. Yeah, this is great. So we're, we, you and I will do another show of deeper dive on the RoboTaxi, on the FSD. Uh, we're going to James Dalma comments on that. But right now we're talking about the stock and being back to Mag 7. Some people are saying we can see Tesla become a Mag 1 and... You know, it's interesting that as they we're back in that space, you know, there's people who think it's going to fall. We'll talk about the shorts going up, and then we've got people who are really bulls. And so let's start with the bulls. You've got um, Kathy Wood, ARK Invest. Of course, she wrote up this incredible projections for Tesla's RoboTaxi. Uh, Elon himself twice said in the uh, annual shareholder meeting, I really like her analysis the most. Peter Diamandis, who's a tech futurist, in, 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 interviewed her. So let's watch that clip. And uh, love the research, which is on uh, Tesla's robo-taxis. Um, we have an announcement coming up shortly, uh, but a lot of news there. Uh, uh, talk to us about what's coming, what the implications are, because it's huge. It is huge, uh, and there are so many doubters. It's, it's, it's very interesting. I think the most important, one of the most important pieces of work um, – not sure if I shared it with you, although it is in uh, Big Ideas – is the safety work uh, mm -hmm. that I saw? That, I saw the graphs and big ideas. And again, by the way, where do people go to download the big ideas uh, yes, document? It's arc-invest.com, yeah. uh, and in there you will see a, a chart showing the safety of uh, of a cruise automation car, a Waymo car, the average car in the U.S., a Tesla car before FSD and a Tesla car after F FSD. Uh, I'll just give two of those. 
the average car on the road in the U.S. has an accident every 200,000 miles. The, the average car with old FSD, think six months ago, uh, has an accident every 3.2 million miles. 200 to 3, you know, Volvo built uh, uh, its brand, A brand. And its business yeah. on safety. Uh, I, yeah. think, I think Tesla, I think we're, we're trying to tell this story, but that Tesla should be using this. Um, uh, so uh, we, we believe that uh, with unboxed manufacturing, with this August 8th announcement, uh, Elon has been sending messages to his employee base, his supplier base, uh, to the extent he has not verticalized, and and to uh, ultimate consumers that we're getting very close to the uh, days of a robo taxi uh, driving us from point A to point B uh, safely, quickly, and and cheaply, inexpensively. So, uh, um, as you know, uh, we did we've we've put out our model. And the last year, uh, we assumed that our price target, uh, that, that two thirds of it would be due to RoboTaxi. Our confidence that RoboTaxi is going to launch within the next 18 months, maybe two years, is very high. So much so that you'll also see in the Tesla report that we put out, that you can find at the same site, um, that we, uh, we would be shocked if it isn't within two years. There's, you know, the probability of later, we think has diminished uh, significantly. Given the breakthroughs in AI, how quickly Tesla is harnessing them, how much data it is continuing to collect. And, you know, Tesla said, uh, or Elon said in his shareholder during the shareholders meeting recently, that um, the, 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 the disengagements are happening so rarely now uh, with full self-driving that he's worried about boredom, you know, of the, the humans who are overseeing this. They're not, they're not finding disengagement. So they are getting very close. Uh, unbox manufacturing means they will be manufacturing both human-driven cars and robo-taxis in the same facility, no more assembly line, completely, uh, you know, new first principles thinking, and they'll toggle between them based on demand. So we, we are getting close. And we also think we'll learn more about Master Plan 4 on October 8th. Might be wrong on that, but, uh, you know, because he didn't put out Master Plan 3 more than maybe a year or a year and a half ago. So, but that's how quickly the world you know, is changing. Okay, pause it there. Wow, that's great. Uh, she went through a number of things. I didn't know a few things you said. What's um, What was your interpretation of what you heard? Yeah, I mean, part of this is stuff that we have heard from Kathy before, but it is just good to reflect back and think about those first principles things. I would definitely agree with her that we are, and you know, this reflects the comments I was making earlier, that I don't know if we're within six months of solving essentially level five autonomous functionality, probably not based on how fast we're seeing 12.4 roll out. Um, but I think that that two year time frame that she's talking about is very reasonable. I don't know that I would have 90% confidence of two years, um, but I would definitely have high confidence, maybe 70, 75% confidence that it lands within that time frame. And if you think that that's, you know, even if you say, okay, go out to three years and now you're 90% or 95%, that is still a time scale on which there are no other competitors in the world who can ramp up the amount of manufacturing capacity to produce these vehicles at a low enough price to really have any sort of competitive threat to Tesla. And it means that the market share opportunity for Tesla to capture is massive. And um, I think that's the thing that most people just are not fully appreciating is that there's no one else right now who is really in a strong position to be able to take this autonomous rideshare market away from Tesla. They are far, far, far ahead in the lead pull position of the mass market 
opportunity of this technology that regardless of how good Waymo can be in San Francisco, they do not have a business model that is capable of scaling to millions and millions of vehicles all across the United States and Europe and you know these large developed markets um, quickly enough to have any sort of defensive moat against Tesla. Um, Kathy, they start getting a little bit more about uh, what they think about Tesla here. So let's listen to that. I, I think, I mean, Tesla for me is, is, the, is the unsung hero of the decade ahead. And so your position there is fully validated in my brain. Um, and it comes from uh, the work they're doing, obviously, in their, in their vehicles and their lower price vehicles. And really, I mean, they're going to decimate internal combustion engine cars. It's just going to be cheaper, faster, better, higher performance vehicle, and it's been, period. It's, and Yeah, sorry. It's been, again, I've watched uh, the traditional auto manufacturers. They've rallied in here. Why? Because they're pulling back on electric. They're pulling back on autonomous. And, the mar and they're raising dividends and increasing share repurchases. That's just more nails yeah. in the coffin. They're, if you ask they're manipulate. It's, it's manipulation in the wrong direction. But what's coming on top of that, of course, is uh, Tesla is an energy company. Uh, Tesla, Tesla is an AI company. Tesla is a humanoid robot company. Tesla is a replacement for Uber. Um, and all of these things, any one of them uh, can, can double, triple, you know, get close to 10xing the valuation of the company. Uh, so um, the question you have to ask yourself is, can, will Elon fall this time? Will he not be able to perform? And uh, I think the, the recent, you know, uh, pay package he received, um, or at least received validation of, uh, is all the motivation he needed to, to push through. And, and, and he will be, we talked about this last time, and it's now even more evident, he will become the first trillionaire, uh, hands down, period. Oh, um, we, and I don't think that's very far away. Yeah, we would uh, absolutely, we would not be surprised. Uh, Tesla alone, yeah. and in our model, we don't include much for Optimus. We just assume that Optimus becomes, uh, you know, um, a huge productivity booster within the Tesla organization. We're not assuming any outside sales at all. So, you know, that's a call option. Uh, energy storage uh, we, is, is much more of a call option for us. He, uh, uh, Elon thinks it can be as big or bigger than autonomous. We would find that hard to believe uh, because we think auto the autonomous opportunity, eight to $10 trillion, this is for the entire ecosystem, not just Tesla, in revenue generation. This is including China. And of course, Tesla is now going to be participating in this space in China. Um, eight to 10 that was trillion. A coup. Okay. Yeah, it is. Some people say, you know, we're, we're debating this ourselves. Uh, you know, is, did China invite them in because China wants to reverse engineer what they're doing because Baidu and Apollo are not uh, are not up to snuff yet? Or are they uh, letting uh, Tesla partner with Baidu for, you know, for mapping reasons? I, you know, there's there's a big divide there. I tend to I tend to think China wants to be first on robo taxis, meaning more ubiquitous robo taxis. Uh, and they want to learn more from Tesla, just like they did yeah, with EVs. Uh, you know, speaking of this, let's not forget um, China is developing their own humanoid robot, robots as well. We've seen Unitree there, which was uh, announced at $16,000 price tag. Uh, the the uh, tariff doubled it to 32000 and then Elon came out at 10000 I found that within, you know, a month of it, a month of the announcements fascinating. Uh, but uh, it's moving fast. And again, we have to realize all of this is riding on top of the AI wave, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I all right. So that was fun. <laughs> Any comments on what you heard? I mean, yeah, so many points that they hit on that I, I really appreciate. And the, I'll start with energy and just say that I, you know, I think that ARC is kind of underestimating mm -hmm. that side of the business right now, you know, between finally seeing the growth and deployments this past quarter that we've kind of been waiting around for for a while. Um, that really shows that the the market really is there for these mega packs to be deployed at scale 
that it is kind of a long, slow process for a lot of the customers that are bringing these in and connecting them to their grids, but that once this ramp really gets going, that yeah, we'll have lots more factories that we need to set up like Lathrop to supply all of this demand. And then, you know, just like there was a lot of excitement, uh, I don't know what, 18 months ago from people like JP Sartre on um, X and there was that zero hedge guy that um, I think he was, yeah, honestly, I think he was a con man. Um, but besides him, there was a lot of other legitimate people with a lot of excitement and they modeled out the revenue earnings potential for mega packs. And, you know, they were beating the drum that it's much, much, much higher than most people expected. And then we heard Zach Kirkhorn say that, well, our target is going to be 25% margins. Um, but based on, you know, the conversation that, you know, Larry was having with Matt last week, it looks like they have been, you know, they're finally able to fully recognize some of this deferred revenue that's been out there. That as they do that, that those margins are going to creep up well in excess of 25%. And if that's the case, it has a dramatic impact on the bottom line because these sales are so large as far as the, you know, the dollar amount of these contracts. And, um, so I think that that has a, a good potential to provide a lot of earnings growth for Tesla that maybe isn't as much as the robo taxi opportunity over a five to 10 year time horizon, but it definitely is, you know, in excess of just the pure automotive market for the time being. 